Chichester Harbour lies in the northeast of the Solent and is an area of outstanding natural beauty. Sadly, the harbour's salt marsh, a unique and vital habitat, is under threat. As part of the Solent Seascape project, Blue Marine Foundation have teamed up with various organisations to restore this ecosystem before it's too late. So it's a big exciting day today because it's day one of the first part of the Solent Seascape project which is a five-year project to restore nature across the Solent region and you can see the barge and the excavators just out there they're dredging sediment from the seabed and we're going to take that sediment and use it as part of an innovative trial to restore salt marsh in Chichester Harbour. Tom and Sarah are standing down on the pontoon um, they've been the people who've pulled this part of the project together and I think the barge is about to leave so we're going to go and see what they're doing. Most of UK dredging on marine, in the marine environment involves uh, excavation by suction or excavator and it's put in a barge or a ship and taken offshore and dumped. And what we're trying to do is turn that barge around and bring it to the near shore and allow that barge to deposit its load as close to the habitat we're trying to restore as possible. And then the winch and box effectively scoops the material up and skids it across the foreshore and up to the intertidal zone where we can use it to form a new habitat. In Chichester Harbour, we've lost about 60% of our salt marsh since 1946. That's about 420 hectares. And it's estimated that we're continuing to lose 2.54 hectares of salt marsh a year and that's about the size of three football pitches. Because salt marsh is, is declining at, at such an accelerating rate, you know, we need to take action now. Um, otherwise, the risk is that by the middle of the next century, we will have lost all the salt marsh within, within Chichester Harbour. Salt marsh is a very valuable habitat. It's important for so many reasons, not only for biodiversity, but it also provides many, many other services that society is really only just trying to understand. And those services include things such as carbon sequestration. It stores, it sequesters carbon. Um, it also helps to improve water quality. It helps to um, filter the water. The little creeks that you can see here are perfect nursery grounds for, for small fish and it keeps them safe until they grow and they're big enough to swim out into the larger channel. It also acts as a, as a natural sea defence. When waves crash over the salt marsh, it sort of acts almost like a sponge trying to um, remove and, and, and soften the energy of the waves. So all of these benefits that salt marsh provide are, are so important for the people who use, live and, and enjoy the harbour. So the barge is almost full, the last few excavator buckets are going in and once they're in there's going to be 300 cubic metres of mud in that barge. We're going to be collecting the same amount of mud every day this week, taking it down to Ichna and putting it onto the foreshore where it will become the foundation of the most fantastic salt marsh ecosystem. The barge is just about to leave and we need to follow it down to Ichna so I'm just going to go and get Tom and Sarah and we're going to head off. So earth change is a new division of land and water and we're looking solely at circular economy, so using waste materials to solve habitat creation and nature recovery projects. So the two parts of the business are working together. Earth change has helped enable this project to come together by engaging with all the stakeholders and statutory bodies to get consents in place and to get us permission to work and then land and water again to deliver the work. In splicing together something like this, you know, for the first time, there are all sorts of different people that have been absolutely incredible in making, in believing in us. <laughs> well, I've been here for nearly all my life, 70 years, and um, it's been interesting over certainly the last few decades how much of the salt marsh has died off. You know, we're very, very much looking forward to uh, seeing this being a successful operation.
The target site for this new salt marsh is further upstream, near the village of Itchena. We've arrived here at Itchena at our salt marsh restoration site and the barge is just on its way with the sediment. In fact, here the barge comes. Really exciting. This is a really important moment for the process. The barge has to drop the sediment at exactly the right location so it can be dragged onto the shore. Communication between the teams is integral. Operationally, uh, things have gone pretty well as well as we could have hoped for. Um, we got almost a full load from our, our, our dredging partners um, and we are now waiting for the tide to go down to a point where we can drag all the sediment that they have dropped um, up onto the shore to create the salt marsh. The barge that we saw earlier gathering sediment from Chichester Marina has placed that sediment just out there. And now this revolutionary piece of technology, which is called a salt marsh restoration drag box, is drawing that sediment up to the top just here, um, to this degraded area of shoreline, where that large green amphibious vehicle is reprofiling the sediment, making sure it's at the perfect height for salt marsh colonisation. And what we hope this will achieve for the project is that one day in a few years time this area will be colonised with beautiful salt marsh once again. This is our new salt marsh restoration drag box which is undergoing its first uh, sea trials. We have reinvented this from a, a historic method of uh, dredging lakes. We've then brought that forward into the okay. today's climate with a more modern winch system and now undergoing our first trials. We've had a few learning curves to uh, get up and down. We've um, had to, we had additional skids on the back which we've re removed this morning. Thus uh, my current state, I don't always look like this, but on the whole, it's gone very well and we are pleased. The revolutionary drag box is pulled up and down the foreshore around 30 times to transfer the full load of sediment. This can only be done when the tide has retreated far enough to expose the fresh deposit. It's then a race against the tide. So the benefit of not disposing at sea means we're using material as a resource rather than discarding it in an environment where it shouldn't be. And we're using indigenous silt. So this is silt that's born inside the habitat in which we're working and we're keeping it there. But other techniques have tried to rebuild salt marshes by pumping the mud into those locations. And that involves adding water and that the water and the dirty water has a impact on other parts of the sensitive habitat. The advantage of the drag box is it uses the silt at the same density which the dredger delivered it at. So we're not adding turbidity and, and broadening impacts by trying to save that habitat. In parts of the farm we've been suffering quite serious erosion over the last few years and um, it's noticeable I think that without the reed growth the wave uh, impact is definitely greater than it would otherwise have been. So um, as well as the reed growth being good for the 
the birds and the fish, I think it's also going to be good for preserving the land and the shoreline. So assuming that we get all the sediment in the right place and to the right levels, it will self-colonate. With excitement, we might see some small plants a bit later this summer, um, but certainly in the next couple of years. But I think what's more exciting is the opportunity to validate this process for future carbon trading and nitrate absorption or nutrient absorption, because that's going to access a, a different route to funding and that compensates the difference in cost between conventional dredging and dumping offshore and the additional cost of this habitat creation. So we're hoping to close that gap by accessing new revenue streams that haven't been there before and the Environment Bill and all the other bits of legislation that are coming around nature's recovery is beginning to open those doors. We're looking at you know how can we better organise our partners, how can we sink um, the dredges better, how can we take into account more of the tides and when we can and can't work and then the actual machinery themselves, the drag box in particular, can be improved, it'll be, it'll be larger, um, it'll spill less stuff, it'll have even less effect on, on the actual the, the mud flats over which it's pulled. And so there's lots of things to work on but for the most part we're probably 8 out of 10. This project has been in development now for well, well over a year. Uh, there's been a huge amount of planning and licenses and consent. And I think this project has been a fantastic example of, of partnership working and how it can be successful. ABP Mayor provided advice on the design of the scheme and they led the application for the marine licence. Natural England, the Environment Agency, helping us with the habitat regulation assessment, helping us to get the, the marine management licence. By bringing everyone together to really understand the project and what we're trying to achieve, I think that's really, really helped the, you know, that planning and development stage to go you know, very successfully. We know the machine works, we know the process works. Ultimately, the proof of the pudding is the growing of the, the salt marsh. So I'm slightly um, concerned about our ability to, to, to be able to deliver the salt marsh at the correct height at the end of this first year, because the mixture, although is, is, pretty, is pretty solid, it may not be solid enough to get it to the right height to mean high water, um, but if it's not, we'll come back <laughs> and we'll succeed next year um, and we'll succeed the year after. After. But um, that's, the, that's the only concern that we have right now, which given where we were six days ago, that is a beautiful thing. I mean, we're very pleased to have been able to be involved in this because it's a very worthwhile project. Um, there's absolutely no downside from our perspective, there's, there's no damage and I think the long-term benefits are going to be enormous, not only for the wildlife but also for the land. And I would certainly recommend that anybody else who has an opportunity uh, participates. Just through the delivery of the project, so many people have stopped and, and asked what's happening, what are we doing here? And for us to be able to engage with those people and explain to them what's happening, that's been a fantastic opportunity. But also we need to think about, through the Chapman Partnership, how we can extend that. How can we make people more aware of the value of these intertidal benefits. And it's not just about biodiversity, it's about all those ecosystem services that we get from the intertidal habitats that are so important to people. And without them, you know, and without nature, you know, the, the harbour would, would, would be a very, very different place. It's been an amazing start to the Solent Seascape project. The sun has even come out at the end of the day for us. We watch the barge collecting the sediment up at Chichester Marina and bring it down here to Itchena, which is our first active restoration site. We hope that sediment is going to become the foundation of a beautiful salt marsh. But this is just the first of many initiatives that are going to form part of the Solent Seascape project. As time goes on, we're going to build oyster reefs, plant seagrass meadows, build even more salt marsh and also restore seabird nesting sites across the whole Solent region. Watch this space to see what happens. Mm -hmm.